So welcome to the Athens Historical Society Hall Awards. It is always a joy to come together, especially when we have a turnout like this in this miserable weather, uh, to meet with this group, this group that works to preserve, promote, and research Athens history, all of you. Uh, we're all part of the group here, I think. And it's great to get together to recognize what we might call our superstars in the community uh, and our leaders in our endeavors. And I think we've been uh, very fortunate in having recipients of this award who so many of us have personally consulted. This has been a very personal award, except for Augustus Longstreet Hall, who I've never met. But, <laughs> but otherwise, these are the people who add so much value and understanding to this community we love and promote. Now, every Hall Award is a special one because of the recipient. But this year, I think it's also important to realize that this is the last award to be presided over by outgoing president, Mike Kitchens, who has taken my place in the rumble seat back there. Uh, Mike is the originator and guiding light behind this award. And I think that's been a factor in people recognizing the organization and joining again. And so, Mike, thank you so much for your promotion of this very important part of the Athens Historical Society. <laughs> and one or two other things you did while you were president for all those years. Uh, I'm sure Mike is sitting over there fussing about how the focus of the award should be the recipient, not him. And, and he's correct. In our first year, as you may remember, we recognized the man who wrote it all down posthumously, Augustus Longstreet Hall. Uh, our next award was to that diligent and painstaking researcher, the late Patricia Cooper. Uh, Patricia Cooper, if you didn't get to know her when she was with the organization and with us, look at your bibliography, your tables of contents, your footnotes. She's all over the place, often correcting an error that's been in place and cherished by maybe our Chamber of Commerce for a hundred years. Uh, she hunted them down and eliminated them, and that's what we love in the archive business. Last year, we were honored to present the award to the person who has been pushing Athens history forward her entire life, researching, speaking, and publishing, Mary Bondurant Warren. We love to see Mary Clare come into the Harvard. I think we can agree on that, Steve. Uh, except that we know that if she has a question for us, it's going to be a really bad one if she hasn't been able to find the answer. So, you know, we, but we're still happy to see you. Um, and now we come to the latest person to honor us by accepting this award, Charlotte Thomas Marshall. Now, I could start talking about her myself. But fortunately, there are three excellent speakers today who are eager to give their perspectives on Charlotte's contributions. And I think when you hear their names, you'll realize that just as hers are, their fingerprints are all over Athens history. Um, our first speaker I'd like to invite up to the podium to witness and testify is the legendary Gary Doster expert on postcards, banknotes, street names, and just about everything else Athenian, and a good bit beyond. Gary will be quick to tell you that he is a collector, not a historian, and you can be equally quick to tell him that's just bunk. <laughs> if nothing else, well, as you know from his postcard history, uh, which was put together with a significant amount of help from somebody else who will be at this uh, podium later today. Uh, if nothing else, Gary uses his collecting as a sort of crowbar to pry into history uh, like any good collector does. He's learning. He doesn't just, otherwise he could just collect little glass figurines like something out of Tennessee Williams. But no, he knows the story and the reason behind everything. And uh, when he uh, pries into history, he passes that crowbar on all to the rest of us willingly and gives us those insights. So, yeah, historian. Gary Doster, uh, he is also, I might mention, one of the most insightful editors in the area, as I know from humbling personal experience, uh, gratefully. Uh, it's interesting, though, when I first wrote insightful, I did that with a C, and I, I wonder if there's a Freudian message there. Uh, but at any rate, regardless of that, I would like to now call upon Gary Doster to come up and speak a few words about today's recipient.
Gary. That was a little much, Stephen. <laughs> Thank you. I'm delighted to be here. Uh, Teresa, Milton, and I are limited to five minutes each for this presentation, but since I'm not a great fan of long-windedness, I will take only four. <laughs> Milton can have my other minute. <laughs> this is a this is a really a great honor that's being bestowed upon my friend Charlotte Marshall, and it's a great honor for me to be asked to speak on this auspicious occasion. First off, there's no one among us who is more deserving. Over the years, Charlotte has acquired a tremendous amount of knowledge about Athens history, especially our people in their homes. And she doesn't keep it all to herself either. She has written more about Athens history than anyone else I know. And she has given untold numbers of presentations about Athens history to historians, civic groups, and others. One of her first major contributions was more than 30 years ago, way back in 1987, when she wrote Historic Houses of Athens. This was uh, published by the Athens Historical Society. Her most recent works have included Volume 1 of Oconee Hill Cemetery and Volume 1 of The Tangible Past in Athens, Georgia. And there's been quite a few other publications in between. And she's not finished yet. There's a great deal more to come. And in addition to all of her physical accomplishments, Charlotte has been a faithful and effective mentor to many of us. I really believe that she enjoys the endeavors of those she helps more than she enjoys her own projects. And we are all better off for it. I've not accomplished all that much, but I don't think I've been involved in a single project that she does not help with. Thank you, Charlotte. Oh, and speaking of being honored, Several years ago, Charlotte asked me to help her inventory all the tombstones in Oconee Hill Cemetery. <laughs> I was delighted to help. I uh, was quite flattered. We spent many weeks and walked many miles, and we recorded every inscription on every grave marker in the cemetery on both sides of the river, <laughs> twice. I was extremely flattered that she had asked someone like me to help someone like her do something like that. Then after we all were all finished, I found out the truth. Charlotte is terrified of snakes. <laughs> and, and everywhere she goes outside of her house looks snaky to her. And she discovered that I ain't afraid of no snakes. And she had me, had me working side by side with her so if we ran up on a snake, I could protect her. It turned out I was just a glorified bodyguard with a clipboard and pencil. <laughs> Charlotte Marshall is an excellent example of something that has fascinated and amazed me for a long time. And I've known quite a number of people who fit, who fit this description. And that is how someone can move into an area and become interested in local history and wind up knowing more about their new home than the local natives. I was born in Athens and I have lived here and in a joint in Oconee County for 78 years. And I've been interested in Athens history all my life. Charlotte was born 263 miles from here in Donaldsonville, way down in the southwest corner of Georgia. And I don't know half as much about Athens history as she does, maybe just one fourth. When Charlotte moved here just over 50 years ago, she fell in love with Athens and George Marshall. I'm not sure in which order. <laughs> and she stayed and adopted Athens as a new home. After a while, she became so much like a native that many people don't realize that she came from somewhere else. Now, I know that what is said here today will be preserved for future generations, and that is good and important for the following reason. A.L. Hull's Annals of Athens is one of the most important books about Athens that has ever been written. But if you look at her record, Charlotte has already far outdone Mr. Hull over the years. So perhaps in the future, Charlotte will be similarly recognized and a Charlotte Thomas Marshall Award will be created to honor future historians. The Athens Historical Society created the Hull Award in 2015 after Mr. Hull had been dead for 107 years. <laughs> perhaps it won't take that long for future historians to recognize Charlotte. I think it would be a greater honor to receive the Charlotte Thomas Marshall Award 
than the Augustus Longstreet Pearl Award. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Next, we call upon Milton Leathers, a name you all know. Milton was born into Athens history, so in some ways he could hardly help getting involved in our community's history. And sometimes, indeed, with his world travels and brilliant grandchildren all over the planet, it's uh, hard to figure out just how he finds time to be so involved with Athens history still. But he does hit the ground here now and then to write, lead tours, speak, and just generally cheerlead everybody else's efforts as well. Milton loves to regale his friends with anecdotes and insights about Athens figures, sometimes scandalous. I bet he'll have one or two observations about Charlotte Marshall as well. But good ones, right, Milton? If you would. Thank you, Stephen. Where is Charlotte? Oh, I couldn't find her when I couldn't see you. Um, yes, I tell you, it's... Um, quite something to come here today to honor somebody like Charlotte because it's, it's hard to cover all the bases, as we all know. Um, some years ago, I ran into a friend, and uh, he quoted me to myself. I, I don't, I don't want to be as presumptuous as uh, George Bernard Shaw. You know, Shaw uh, famously said, I often quote myself, it adds spice to the conversation. <laughs> But uh, this was a friend quoting me. He ran into me and said, are you going to hear Charlotte Marshall uh, speak next week? And I started to ask him, uh, what is she speaking? And then I said, oh, never mind. It doesn't matter. Uh, I don't care what she's speaking about. Uh, I would go to hear Charlotte Marshall read her spaghetti recipe. <laughs> uh, it really doesn't matter to me what she's uh, speaking on. Uh, Charlotte told me that when she was working on the Oconee Hill Cemetery book, that she simply loved some of the old, some charmingly outdated forms that the obituary writers used to employ uh, writing, the, writing up the recently departed. I asked her which ones she liked. She told me a few of them, and they were charming, but Charlotte said that her favorite was the descriptor Golden Hearted. When she ran into Golden Hearted, she said it thrilled her to read, read this uh, description of a departed Athenian. Uh, Charlotte said, wouldn't it be just so very fine to live such a life that after you were gone, people would remember you as golden-hearted, and I agreed with her. I told Charlotte that one of my favorites uh, from her big annotated 2009 book was a copy of an obituary of an Athens man who's, who was published in the New York Times. During the war between the states, horrific as it sounds, you'll recall at times there were spectators on the sidelines who'd come out to watch the battles. Good Lord, what an afternoon outing. Anyway, at one of these fam most famous battles, uh, surely, uh, there was a spectator, a clergyman no less, and he stood in a perfect observation point. The New York Times accepted the Reverend Anderson's eyewitness judgment for a 1907 headline in, the obit in their obituary for a deceased Athenian. It, it read that he is said to have advanced furthest at Gettysburg of any Confederate. Uh, the Reverend Anderson was quoted as having called this captain the Confederate who penetrated farthest at Gettysburg. I told Charlotte I like the ring of that phrase. One of Charlotte's uh, annotations mentions an Athens man, and some of us can identify with this. She mentioned a prominent Athens man who gave away a modest fortune in his younger days when riding a wave of commercial prosperity. <laughs> some of us can look back and think, gee, it'd be nice to have some of that money back. But I, I like that phrase, too. That shows you uh, uh, an obituary with uh, uh, the clarity of hindsight. Charlotte came to Athens over 50 years ago. It's hard for all of us to conceive of how many hours and hours and years she has dedicated to producing everything she's given us. She's a researcher, a much-in-demand speaker, a tour guide, a teacher, a mentor to individuals, a friend, an encourager, a one-woman reference desk at almost any hour, day or night, an ever-helpful model citizen in so many ways. The Augustus Longstreet Hall Award is intended, as defined by the Athens Historical Society, to recognize individuals who have made extraordinary contributions to the study and preservation of Athens history. 
before presenting this award to her, I feel uh, I must make some mention of one aspect of the honoree's life to which I give the title, Charlotte the Master Gardener. How many of you have seen the beautiful flowers and landscaping at George's and Charlotte's house on Riverview Road? Not many, I suppose, because you haven't, because Charlotte the Master Gardener never happened. <laughs> Gardening is where she thought she was headed until she married George. Charlotte's derailed life as a famous gardener can be blamed on four old Athens names, West, Reed, Taylor, and Grady. George Octavius Marshall, Jr. was a native of America's Georgia, but in 1956, he married his first wife, a young lady with deep roots in Athens, Marion Lampkin West. After a suitable number of years, Marion's family liked George so much that they declared him an Athenian. Sadly enough, Marion Marshall died in 1964, but the West kept George, and George kept them. George apparently had taken to heart what his landlady, Miss Henrietta Tibbetts, had told him when he was a student in Athens. He was renting on Hill Street from Miss Tibbetts, and he caught a cold, and he asked Miss Tibbetts, uh, who should I go to? And Miss Tibbetts uh, said, well, I think Bowling to Bose, uh, he'll get you fixed up. And she handed him the telephone book. She said, and he's, he has a grandmother, and call him. And so George did, and he got in to see Bowling to Bose, and Bowling fixed him up. And the next week, George was asking his landlady, he said, tell me now, when you told me where I should go, you told me that uh, uh, Dr. DeBose uh, could get me fixed up. You said he was in your church, and you said he had a grandmother. And I'm not sure what what did you mean by that? And Ms. Tibbetts said, well, Mr. Marshall, you haven't lived in Athens very long. But when, when you've been in Athens uh, longer, you'll realize that in Athens it is necessary to have a grandmother. <laughs> so George had learned to hang on to his... Uh, deceased wife's relatives. When George married Charlotte Thomas in 1967, the new bride was taken under the wings, at times perhaps gasping for air, by her new husband's relatives. The aunt, Miss Frances West Reed, had a project in her head to recreate, to recreate lost Oconee Hill records by copying all tombstone inscriptions in the old part of the cemetery. The project was begun by some ladies personally, but it soon came under the auspices of the Athens Historical Society. We know where that led. So much for West and Reed. The Taylor and the Grady names loomed up when, as an Athens Junior Assembly member, young Charlotte was given the task of writing the history of the organization's Greek revival headquarters on Prince Avenue. Once Charlotte said, I don't know why they asked me, I know nothing about architecture. But that assignment started Charlotte down another path uh, to understanding not just the people who lived in Athens, but the buildings they constructed to live in and work in and to enjoy. And the rest is quite literally history. Charlotte became so fine and so involved with our city's people and, and the built environment that George, she said, began calling her a faux Athenian. The files of information in her study at home grew and grew. I once called to get a piece of information uh, for Charlotte. Charlotte was at home, uh, but George said, oh, Charlotte's got that. I said, are you sure she's got that? George said, oh, I know she's got that. Before Charlotte throws away any piece of paper with information on it, she makes two copies of it. <laughs> so uh, she, she will have that information. So in a nutshell, that's the story of Charlotte's magnificent gardens that never were. The acknowledgments in the front of the, her Oconee Hill book thank Charlotte's parents and say in particular from her mother and her mother's father, quote, I inherited an intrinsic interest in our own and in other families' genealogies, as well as the capacity to retain all the relationships. That, friends, is a key to one part of Charlotte's genius, that capacity to retain in her head all those relationships which Charlotte does it better than any person I've ever known. Her last line in the acknowledgement amuses me. It reads, for the sake of the record, I have no ancestors buried in Oconee Hill Cemetery. And at, at the time I became involved in the cemetery project, I had no idea I was remotely kin to anyone buried there. Well, I once heard someone say, you give Charlotte a stranger and 15 minutes and she will find a connection. Now she knows she is related to people in Oconee Hill. 
including, by the way, the 19th century Athenian that she studied and came to love and whom she's admired the most over the years. She found out she was related to that lady buried at Oconee Hill. So what do we have in this year's winner of the Augustus Longstreet Hall Award? Yes, her files are jammed with papers, but we know Charlotte's much more than a copier of papers, two copies or more. She's a lover of Athens history who ultimately internalizes all of that information, slowly, uh, thoroughly internalizes it, and then presents it back to us in the cogent, sensible, and delightful way we have come to expect. And Charlotte is no faux Athenian, she's the real thing. I've always said Athens is different from places like Madison or Savannah because if you have such an interest in becoming an Athenian, you can become one. I think because of the university, Athens has always welcomed newcomers with talent, and Charlotte is no full Athenian. She's the genuine article. I've gone over so many excellent and admirable qualities possessed by our award winner today, but what is her most important one? That question is worth considering, and I, before I gave this talk, as I was working on it, I gave it some thought. I believe that all of you gathered here today to honor our friend and mentor and tireless worker for Athens history will agree with me that Charlotte does have a cardinal trait that stands out. Yes, I believe that all who know her will understand that Charlotte Thomas Marshall is, above all things, golden hearted. <laughs> Thank you, Milton. I, I should have credited Milton. I, I can't credit him as having edited me as fiercely as Gary has, but Milton is my official advisor on pronouncing everything in the South. So I thank you for that, <laughs> even if I disagree with you at times. Let's thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Leathers. Um, our final speaker today is none other than Teresa Flynn. Many of you have personally benefited by her knowledge of genealogy and deep Athens history during her time as a librarian archivist at the Heritage Room at the Athens Clark Public Library. Uh, many of us recall and still treasure her blog entries from the Heritage Room, beginning with a stray point or an odd advertisement, uh, odd little thing that just caught her eye after which she would then drag you into this vortex of information going out in all directions uh, till at the end, sort of a, like a, a Coney Island of history, you stumbled out of the whole blog shaking your head and saying, wow, um, they were wonderful, wonderful essays. Like Gary, she's a shark of an editor and recently stepped back from being a mover and shaker on the board of the Athens Historical Society being a mover and shaker among our civilian members like you all. And remember, Mike extended that cordial invitation. Even, even if it seems like with 15 members, we've got 90% of you on the board now. We need talents all the time uh, to help our committees, specialists in the community who can help us move forward this organization. Teresa Flynn is an excellent role model for that. She is also an expert on research on vice and folly in Athens. But today, we'll let her expound, I trust, in a more positive light as she talks to us about our recipient. Teresa. So I am extraordinarily honored to be here today to speak about a truly lovely person, Charlotte Thomas Marshall. She is a dear friend, an accomplished lady, and she is one of my most trusted sounding boards for many things and things in life, from social questions to brainstorming alternate locations for historical records that are not where they're supposed to be. She is one of the few people in the world with whom I can have a nearly seven hour lunch, and as I am walking back into my house, think, oh, we forgot to talk about. <laughs> many of you have probably had similar experiences. It is her vast curiosity and formidable knowledge that make her the sort of person with whom one does not tire of conversation. And anyone who speaks with her comes away feeling enlightened, heard themselves, and just generally happier. It is a natural gift, one I don't possess, and therefore it is one of the things I find literally marvelous about her. I doubt I am alone. Though Augustus Longstreet Hall Award does not accentuate the tangible past achievements of its recipients, the most important focus to me is the last criterion listed. 
Essentially, it states that the candidate has encouraged and set an example for other historians to produce similarly useful work. This, to me, is where Charlotte's influence will be most felt over time. Her publications and their unique family focus are all uh, are to us a gift today, but like the work of Augustus Hull and his father, Reverend Henry Hull, who does often get overlooked, um, her work provides the foundation, establishing a reliable and sturdy next stage for the other stories to be told and events re-examined by future <clears throat> researchers and writers who also love Athens. Her enthusiasm for my research is how we first truly became friends. When I was a relatively new genealogy librarian in the Heritage Room, abstracting Mayor's Court docket books, and I had become interested in a recurring defendant. Charlotte was completing Volume 1 of Oconee Hill Cemetery, and on one of her frequent last-minute fact-checking visits, I asked her if she knew where my person was located on the grounds. Offhand, she did not. But, she, intrigued by what else I'd found, she took the time to look over her records and email me when she got home with the lot information. It was in a section scheduled for her second volume. So she enlisted Gary Doster to find it and clear the giant holly bush that had grown over the grave <laughs> for the past 77 years. <clears throat> so that I could see the stone, complete with the incorrect birth year, uh, for myself. And we began a conversation about this person and her life that raised more questions to be researched and considered. And every step of the way, Charlotte was a trustworthy consultant for my theories about conflicting or missing information and an enthusiastic listener to my discoveries. As many of you know, the enthusiastic listener can sometimes be very hard to find. While my subject does have a superficially sensationalistic side, that was not what fueled Charlotte's encouragement of my research. She was excited I was looking at a part of Athens history that she, with her knowledge of distinguished and prosperous Barrows and Billups, Hodgson's and Hulls, Carlton and Cobbs, all possible spellings of Talmadge, knew nothing about. It wasn't just that she was interested in this particular tale. It's that she felt all the stories of Athens should be discovered and shared, and wasn't it wonderful to find something new? As one of my favorite non-local historians, Keith Wrightson, puts it, History contains many stories, all of which deserve to be told. It contains, in the evidence it leaves to us, many voices, all of which deserve to be heard. No one owns the past. It is common ground. No single historian can tell all the stories, nor should she. Charlotte understood, because she is nothing but not, if not wise, that history needs a constant stream of curious people with different outlooks and backgrounds and interests to fully tell all of Athens' story. The range of storytellers was one of the great strengths of the tangible past in Athens, Georgia. It contained many contributors providing their distinctive viewpoints, and yet Charlotte was able to wrangle all these essays into a single harmonious volume. Charlotte's curiosity and enthusiasm are an encouragement to other local historians, to the students she takes on tours of a Coney Hill Cemetery, to the random genealogists lucky enough to be referred to her expertise when they are stymied. Her delight when you come to her with a new story or question about Athens and her people is infectious, and her shared disappointment when records are unlikely to be found is felt. She is eager to assist you in any way she can. This affinity is a natural one for Charlotte, for it is how she became an historian herself. The front page of a Coney Hill Cemetery, Volume 1, a flag, book flagpole editor Pete McCommons astutely called the Athens Family Bible, includes a page of dedications to the people who mentored her, encouraged her, and helped guide her to the resulting uniquely wonderful and useful publication. Of the six people named, the first four are women, Family and friends who taught her how to do research, find evidence and trace it carefully, not to overlook the role of family stories in reconstructing the past, and passing on a love of Athens, especially Oconee Hill, and the joy of telling an interesting life story. Everyone has an interesting life story. That Charlotte's own life and work would do the same for others is inevitable, because she has embraced this vocation, and we and future generations will be all the better informed for it. So thank you, Charlotte, and congratulations.
Thank you, Teresa and, and, and Milton and Gary. Um, Charlotte, would you join us at the front, please? While she's walking up here, if I could just add briefly that uh, I've done my own research projects, and uh, Charlotte has been the most generous, the most kind person in helping me in any research I had. There's hardly a topic that I can bring up about an old house or an old family, not only in Athens, but anywhere in Georgia, that she doesn't know some, quite a lot about and can direct me to places I didn't know to go before. So she's been an invaluable resource to me personally as well. Um, Charlotte? You have been a shower too. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Charlotte, it is my honor and privilege to present this award to you as the 2018 Augustus Longstreet Hull recipient. Thank you. Thank you for all you do for us. Before you get to talk, because um, I know you want to talk, um, from, Don from Oconee Hill has something for you as well. Oh, oh my goodness, Don. <laughs> okay, thank you. So it'll be safe. Okay. I, will, I will take this out of your way. This is from the thousands of silent voices at Oconee Hill who might say, thank you, Charlotte, for keeping your memories alive. <laughs> well, in response to Don, I have to say that as I was winding up that first volume of Oconee Hill, and I do intend to finish the other three when I can make myself sit down, um, I enjoy people so much it's hard to restrain myself to stay at home and work at the computer. But as I was winding up that book, and Gary and George were proofreading it, I said, you know, I'm really giving these people another life because it's all been silent since their funeral. And now, since I've annotated their obituaries, I have made them people again. They aren't just tombstones with names and dates. They are personalities again. And that is the way people have responded to the book, and that's why a lot of you are clamoring for me to go ahead and do volumes two, three, and four because you want your ancestors to live again on paper. And as George used to say, the written word remains, so I will get to it. But I had no idea 52 years ago when Mo Phelps brought me to work for the university that uh, I would be here more than two or three years. But what a life this has been, and I could not have had a happier landing than in Athens, Georgia. It is a very special place. And there is no finer award than the Augustus Longstreet Hall Award, because I have read that book backwards and forwards, <laughs> and it is just full of delight, full of information, and not full of misinformation, as so many of our books are. You can trust the holes, and trust is a very important thing in life. And so I hope you can trust our uh, tangible past in Athens, too, because we tried to make it that way for you. But Athens is different from any other town in Georgia. And those of us who have the privilege of living here just have a very rich experience. And I wouldn't be who I am if I hadn't grown up where I grew up. And the editor of my hometown newspaper was sitting beside me a while ago. There he is back there. And I want you to hear this because I do believe that it takes a village. And my village of Donaldsonville, Georgia, loved me and believed in me. And when you know that people believe in you, you will just try to do things. Maybe things that you don't have enough sense to do, but you don't have enough sense not to try to do it. And 
a lot of them turn out. So I'm, I'm very happy to be in your midst and hope to do a lot more. And thank you very much, Michael. Thank you for creating this award, number one, to honor the halls, and that I got one. Let us <laughs> truly really a well-deserved honor for uh, Charlotte, and we hope that she will continue to celebrate with us by, uh, as we adjourn just now, coming out and having some refreshments, which is uh, we catered in from Lindsay's. So we hope you enjoy that. <laughs>